Welcome to Electron Online. Now, gravity has all kinds of applications, both here on Earth and as well up in space. Now, we know that the Earth travels around the Sun and has an orbital period of about a year, but so does Jupiter. And every once in a while, about every 13 months or so, Jupiter is what we call it at opposition, which means it's exactly at opposite direction between the Earth and the Sun. So when the Sun is over here, Jupiter forms a straight line. And what happens when Jupiter is in that position, Jupiter also pulls on the Earth as well as the Sun. Now the Sun's gravitational force is what keeps the Earth in an orbital path around the Sun, which is nearly circular, it's somewhat elliptical. But because Jupiter pulls on the Earth, it causes the ellipticity of the orbit, the shape of the orbit, to change periodically. And so that's what we call orbit perturbations. So what we're going to do here is keep it simple. We're going to calculate the force between Earth and Jupiter and compare that to the force between the Sun and the Earth. It's, by the way, this force between the Sun and the Earth called the centripetal force, which is what keeps the Earth in its orbit. So let's first calculate the centripetal force between the Earth and the Sun. So F centripetal is equal to G, the mass of the Earth, the mass of the Sun, divided by the distance between them squared. So this would be 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. That would be Newton's meter squared per kilogram squared, but we'll leave out the units to keep it simple. The mass of the Earth, let's round it off to 6 times 10 to the 24 kilograms, and the mass of the Sun is about 2 times 10 to the 30th kilograms, about 300,000 times or so larger than the Earth. And then we divide that by the radius, which is 150 million kilometers, or 150 billion meters, and we have to square that. So that gives us the force of attraction between the Sun and the Earth, which is the centripetal force keeping the Earth in its orbit. So it's going to be 6.67 e to the 11 minus times 6 e to the 24th times 2 e to the 30th divided by 150 billion squared equals, and that gives us 3.56, 3.56. Times 10 to the 22nd power. And the units, of course, Newtons, because we're dealing with a force here. So that's the force of attraction between the Earth and the Sun. Now let's find out what the force of attraction is between the Earth and Jupiter. Now the force between Earth and Jupiter is going to be equal to G m big m over r squared now in this case big m will be the mass of jupiter and r will be the distance between the earth and jupiter so this is equal to 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 the mass of the earth and the mass of jupiter which is about 1.9 times 10 to the 27th so you can see here that the mass of Jupiter is roughly 300, 300, a little bit more than 300 times the mass of the Earth. And then we divide that by the distance between them. Now it's about 778 million kilometers between Jupiter and the Sun. That's the average distance. So we subtract 150 million from that. 778 minus 150 is 628 times 10 to the 9th. That's converted to meters and quantity squared. Let's see, 150, yep, that's about right. And so now let's find out the force between Jupiter and the Earth. 6.67 e to the 11 minus times 6 e to the 24th times 1.9 e to the 27th divided by 628 e to the 9th squared equals, and there we get 1.93 times 10 to the 18th. And that's also in Newtons. So you can see it's significantly less, which of course is a really good thing. If this was a lot more, the Earth's orbit would change a lot and would always be on a different path around the Sun. But since it's relatively small, there's only small perturbations, although even those small perturbations do have a tremendous effect on the climate on the Earth over long periods of time, most likely the cause of the ice ages. But now let's go ahead and divide this by this and see what the ratio between the two is. 
So we have the force between the Earth and Jupiter divided by the force between the Earth and the Sun, which is a centripetal force keeping the Earth in its orbit. So the ratio is 1.93 times 10 to the 18th divided by 3.56 times 10 to the 22nd. And so what is that ratio? So divide by 3.56 e to the 22nd, and that's, uh, wow, 5.4 times 10 to the minus 5, which is basically 54 one millionths. So that is the ratio between the force between Earth and Jupiter and the force between the Sun and the Earth. Now, it may not seem like much, but what that does, and of course, each 13 months, so the Earth will be over here 13 months later, after one complete orbit, and then Jupiter will be aligned over here, and they'll tug on it some more, and tug on it some more, and tug on it some more, and the ultimate effect is that instead of staying in its typical orbit around the Sun, the orbit will change. In other words, it will cause the ellipticity to change, and over time, it becomes more elliptical, less elliptical, more elliptical, less elliptical, and Essentially, that is what controls or changes the climate over the long periods of time, over geological time. Of course, over a lifetime, we don't have to worry too much about the effect that Jupiter has on us. But that is how we do that, and that's how we understand the interaction between the planets and the Sun and the Earth. And that's how it's done.